Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Kim and today I'm going to be talking to you about aliens. So I recently finished reading Aliens, which is edited by Jim Al-Khalili at the beginning of May. This book is a collection of essays from many different scientists working kind of within the field of astrobiology, astrophysics, cosmology, etc. Um, and they basically talk about where we're at right now with our search for alien life in the universe, in our solar system, etc. For the most part, I really, really did enjoy this book. It was just kind of short snippets to get a big overview of the whole picture kind of thing. There was information in here also, a little bit about kind of the history of people claiming that they've been abducted by aliens or that they have sighted aliens or UFOs and things like that, and discussing the whole history of that kind of thing. But the majority of this book kind of focused on the science and taught you a lot about where we are now and what scientists are kind of working towards in our quest to kind of find other life. Each of the authors that have a chapter in this book also have a little bio at the back so you can read a little bit about them and they all are kind of very well accomplished in their fields and experts in their fields which was really nice to know and be assured of when reading this book. And so what I wanted to do with this book was talk to you about some of the things that I really enjoyed about this book and some of the topics that I really enjoyed reading about and um, I've basically done some research and I found some further reading to do with those topics that I really liked so I just wanted to share those with you today. I haven't read any of the books I'm going to share with you because I read this book but they're all on my TBR now. So to start with there were just a couple of little fun facts that I read about in chapter one which was written by cosmologist um, Martin Rees. The first little fact that I learned was that Sir William Herschel, who was a great astronomer of the 18th and 19th century, actually believed that the sun might be inhabited. When scientists didn't know much about what the sun was exactly, what was going on with the sun, then why not believe that it could be inhabited? Um, but because of that, I thought to myself, I actually don't know much about Sir William Herschel. So I thought I might like to read a biography about him. But when I started Googling uh, to see what I could find out there, I actually discovered that um, his sister, Caroline, also worked alongside him as an astronomer and did lots of great work as well. And I'm always looking to find out about women kind of lost to history that equally deserve the recognition for their work as their male counterparts do as well. So um, I kind of switched and there are a couple of um, books that I saw that quite interested me. And the first one is Discoverers of the Universe by Michael Hoskin. Um, and this tells the story of both William and Caroline um, and what they discovered. And the second one is Memoir and Correspondence of Caroline Herschel, which was kind of collected um, and put together by Mary Cornwallis Herschel. Caroline was actually the great aunt of Mary's husband. Um, so that's where the link is there. Personally, I really love like reading through people's correspondence from back in the day or from however long ago because I really feel like it helps just personalise these events that happen throughout time when you can read straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak, and just like realise that they're just human beings doing this kind of work. Um, I just find it really interesting and intriguing and I like to know who knew who of the time and stuff like that. I don't care about gossip from nowadays really like gossip from the olden days. And the other really funny thing that I learned in chapter one was that in the 18th century there was a competition for where the grand prize was 100,000 francs for the first person to make contact with aliens. But if you made contact with aliens from Mars then you didn't win the prize because that was deemed too easy a task. I just thought that was quite funny. And then I think after that, when after the period where scientists thought it was very easy to find aliens, um, then we went through a bit of a phase where everybody thought it was nigh on impossible to find any aliens and then according to this book in the 90s things really kicked off again and people started asking the question as to well how can we not possibly find aliens out there like the universe is absolutely huge and also there was lots of evidence to show that the very first life on earth began right at the beginning um, very very close to the beginning of the formation of the earth so if it appeared on earth so quickly then why would it not appear very quickly on another planet and one of the things i really liked about this was that actually they kind of wrote about arguments for and against that line of thinking in this book which was very interesting to read about but unfortunately for me I've become a little bit more pessimistic than I used to be when thinking about whether or not we can make contact with aliens which is a little bit sad but so a book that I found that lines up with the debate of whether or not there is extraterrestrial life is the extraterrestrial life debate antiquity to 1915 and this was edited by Michael J Crow so this is a collection of 
different opinions throughout the ages from scientists and philosophers, I believe, and things like that, that have been collected together to show that this debate of whether or not people believe in extraterrestrial life has basically gone on for such a long time, um, which of course it has, but I just think it would be really interesting to see how it changed over the years. So that one is on my TBR. There was also a lot of talk in this book about where we should look for life, kind of, prior or where we should prioritise looking for life. So should we look outside in the universe, or should we look closer to home in our solar system, or should we in fact actually focus on Earth? For instance, there was some argument to say, well, if life appeared here on Earth once, then why didn't it do it over and over again? Or if it did do it over and over again, how can we find a second genesis, so to speak? And that's something I often think about a lot. I often think about, like, if there was some process that produced life initially, um, then surely that happened again and again and again. So some say that we should actually be focused on Earth and find out more about how life began here before we start looking for life elsewhere in the universe. So there's a fair bit of talk in here about kind of how life evolved and that there were so many weird circumstances to get to us finally. Like so many unlikely events happened in order to get intelligent human life that it seems really unlikely. And reading this, the discussions of evolution kind of kick-started me off thinking I wanted to read more into it because obviously it's such a massive, massive field of science. And in fact, I do actually have three books to do that is linked to um, evolution on my TBR shelf. So I'm going to show you what I have. I'm not going to go into any detail with what they are specifically, but they are linked to evolution. And the first one is The Origin of Life by Adam Rutherford. And actually, Adam Rutherford was one of the authors in um, Aliens. So... He wrote a chapter about science fiction films. It wasn't my favourite chapter, but that might be because I'm not that into science fiction films. <laughs> but I'm still excited to read one of his popular science books, for sure. The second one is The Human Universe by Professor Michael Cox and Andrew Cohen. And the final one is The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins. So there's also a little bit of discussion about what life actually is um, in this book and how scientists don't actually have any kind of consensus as to what life is and how we can define life. And when I did a bit of digging on like to see if there's any further reading on this that I could do, there were quite a few different books written about what is life. But the one that caught my eye was one that was written in 1944 and that is What is Life by Erwin Schrodinger. Schrodinger was a very famous physicist and so this was a popular science book that he wrote that was targeted at people who didn't know much about the field. So I'm very interested to read it. I know it's older and that there will definitely be more up-to-date works on this topic and more modern day thinking but um, I am so intrigued to read a popular science book from such a famous scientist so that's definitely on my list. Also a couple of authors in Aliens also kind of argued that rather than debating about what life is why not instead think about what life actually does so then we can try and work out what we can observe um, in other planets or other moons in order to try and find life. So like one way to do this is to kind of focus on ourselves and think about if we were aliens up in another planet looking down on planet Earth, what would we look for to, what is our signature of life basically down here? The signature for life here on Earth is oxygen. We have a build up of oxygen in our atmosphere that wouldn't be there if there wasn't life here on Earth. So um, if we were aliens looking down, if we detected this kind of imbalance of oxygen in the atmosphere of Earth, then that would imply to the alien that we are here or that there's some kind of life here. So we can kind of use that in order to think, okay, so if there is life like us elsewhere, maybe if we find um, oxygen in the atmospheres of other planets or other moons, then perhaps there's life there. Um, but then you can kind of think about, but what if other life isn't actually made of the same stuff as us? Um, and there was lots of discussion in this book, a fair bit of discussion in this book, obviously not lots because it's not very big. <laughs> um, there was some discussion in this book about other kind of chemistries that we could be, that aliens or other life forms could be built from. And if that was the case, what could we see in other atmospheres? that might indicate life. Giovanna Tonetti, who is an astrophysicist, spoke about the sulphur purple bacteria, um, which actually uses hydrogen sulphide instead of water, and so therefore does not produce any oxygen. So there's loads of different like ways, I guess, chemistry can be used in life. Um, 
possibly. And I found this book actually that doesn't come out until I think the end of June sometime and that is The Zoologist's Guide to the Galaxy by Dr Eric Kirschenbaum who is a researcher at the University of Cambridge. And this is a book that talks about what the animals here on earth can tell us about aliens. So I think that sounds really cool and I think the cover is gorgeous so I will definitely be picking this up as soon as it's out. But then even if we know what to look for like how on earth do we look for it because the planets and everything are so far away, planets around other stars. And this is kind of a really interesting subject because actually the research into planets and moons around other stars, so they're called exoplanets and exomoons, this is actually quite a new area of research within science, which is really exciting. And so at the moment scientists are trying to find planets which are situated at a certain distance from their star, that um, the temperature is just kind of right to sustain life. And so basically the planet has to be not too hot or not too cold to sustain life. And so this area that the planet has to be um, where the temperature is just right is called the habitable zone or the Goldilocks zone. And actually Sarah Sager who wrote the chapter in this book which is called um, Are They Out There? Technology, the Drake Equation and Looking for Other Worlds. Um, she actually devised a way to um, detect these kind of signatures of life. There are a number of ways to do this, I believe, but the way specifically that Sarah Sager devised to do this was that when a planet is orbiting around its star, if it is aligned from our perspective on Earth so that the planet moves in front of the star, um, as the planet moves in front of its star, when the starlight shines into the planet, some of the light moves actually through the planet's atmosphere if there is one. And so the light that reaches Earth that is detected by our telescopes, um, that changes when the planet moves in front of its star very, very slightly. And so what scientists can do is that they can measure this light coming from the star through the atmosphere of the planet. And so they are able to tell just from light what molecules are actually there. And so any kind of imbalances that are found um, and say that there's an excess of one particular molecule, then that might infer life, which is very cool. It might also not infer life in that it could be from a process that's something that isn't connected to life at all. So it could be a geological process or something like that. So it raises more questions and there's more complicated even than that and there's lots and lots to it, etc. But it's still very exciting. Um, and there's actually the James Webb Space Telescope that's going to hopefully be launched next year. And one of its missions is to ex is to observe the atmospheres of other planets um, and look for the building blocks of life, which is really exciting. Um, like I say, it was supposed to go up in 2021 according to their website, but yeah, it has been delayed a lot. I've been waiting for this for a long time, but I'm really hoping that it's going to go up next year because it's going to be so exciting. Anyway, so I did actually find a book about exoplanet as well that was written in 2017. It was written by a British astrophysicist called Elizabeth Tasker and the book is called Planet Factory Exoplanets and the Search for a Second Earth which I think looks really cool and again has a really nice cover. Um, I think they're doing very well with the popular science covers these days. So there's just a couple more things that I just want to chat about in this book. Sorry if this video is kind of long but um, there's just two more things I want to talk about. And the first thing is that the kind of life I'm talking about at the moment doesn't necessarily have to be intelligent life. It could be any kind of life. Um, so what about intelligent life? Um, what are the chances of that? And so actually Martin Rees again, he wrote chapter one, I'm talking about him a lot. <laughs> um, he talked about the fact that even if we detected a signal from intelligent life elsewhere in the universe or in the galaxy, um, what is the likelihood of us actually understanding that signal and able to being able to decode it? He says, you know, if you really think about it, what are the chances of us being at the same technological level as these aliens? Um, if you think about the very, very short amount of time that humans have been here on the Earth, it just seems completely unlikely that we would coincide at the, when we can receive their signals, it would be at the same technological level that we are. It's just an interesting thing to think about. The other thing to think about is, are these intelligent aliens even going to be biological? Or are they going to be AI? Are they going to be robots? Um, because he also kind of talks about that actually when we send humans to Mars, are we going to genetically change them some way so that they can cope in the harsher environment of Mars? And if we do that, like, well, there's even, is that even ethical? Who knows? But are we, if we do it, are we basically turning these humans into these um, superhumans? Um, and they're going to divide off and become their own species, so to speak. And looking to the future and 
kind of thinking about AI and all that kind of thing, and terraforming Mars, etc, etc, is another subject that massively interests me. I absolutely love it. And I have three books on my shelf to do with this as well, and so i just show you them. first one is Michio Keiku, The Future of Humanity. Then we have Life 3.0 by Max Tegmark. And the third one is Yuval Noah Harari's Homo Deus, and he actually wrote The Sapiens as well. I did start reading that, but I didn't actually finish it. So actually, I know I said I had three on there, but also, I always forget this, but this Adam Rutherford book is actually the origin of life on one side, and when you flip it over, it's the future of life. So I guess that's something as well. So, yeah, so this is the future of life, and then halfway through, it turns upside down. I don't know, I kind of like that, it's kind of quirky. So finally, finally, I just wanted to talk about kind of the open-ended questions that come from this topic that I find it really interesting. So Chris McKay, one of the authors in this book, he also kind of spoke about the ethics of us actually finding life. So if we did find any kind of life, even microbial life, on Mars anywhere, what are the ethics involved in that? Are we then obliged to protect that life or can we do what we want with it? You know, stuff like that. Um, as you know, humans, we're not very good at protecting other life. So although I would like to think we would protect any life that we found, I my hopes are slim to none that that would actually happen. The other thing that we have to kind of think about is that when we're sending probes to these places, so like rovers going to Mars etc, is that we don't actually end up taking life from Earth over to Mars. There are some very small life on Earth that are called extremophiles and they can sustain very harsh environments. So they could survive on Mars, possibly. So we have to be really careful about when we find any life elsewhere. We have to be try and be absolutely as certain as possible that it isn't just life from Earth. Any Earthlings that we've taken and flung about the solar system kind of thing. And another thing that is kind of discussed in this book, well everything I've talked about is discussed in this book, is the age-old question of, well, why hasn't anybody come to us yet? And, you know, is that because we're completely alone in the universe or is it because there's so much life in the universe that actually we don't stand out at all? So yeah, this was a very thought-provoking book overall. And um, I just want to end this video talking about science fiction books um, because I haven't really read huge amounts of science fiction books. I did read War of the Worlds earlier this year and I absolutely loved that book. It was so good. <laughs> um, equally, I read... Um, do Android Dream of Electric Sheep, and I really did like that book. So, you know, it's been hit and miss so far. Um, I like the themes of Do Android Dream of Electric Sheep, but I didn't like the sexism that came with it. It was very, um, it was way too much for me. So I'm just going to mention six science fiction books or series that I read about in Ian Stewart's chapter in this book. So Ian Stewart um, actually owns over 8,000 science fiction books. So I really feel like his recommendations have a very solid basis. So, yes. Um, so I'm just going to read out the six that caught my eye. I will say if you do pick up this book, the film and book chapters of this book are so, so spoilery. So just be warned. <laughs> you will know the endings of most of the things they talk about if you read this. Um, but yeah, you know, that happens in discussion books. I do understand that. Okay, so I'm just going to run through the six books or series. And the first one up is Starship Troopers by Robert A. Heinlein. Then Child's End by Arthur C. Clarke. James White's Sector General Stories, Wasp by Eric Frank Russell, Mission of Gravity by Hal Clement, and finally Stephen Baxter's ZD Sequence series. It is not lost on me that those six authors are all white men, so if anyone has any recommendations of female authors or authors from a diverse background, um, etc etc please do let me know because I really would love to read them so that about sums everything up I hope you enjoyed my discussion of aliens and um, I hope you found some cool recommendations I really loved researching this topic and finding out more about the further reading I could do so I hope you enjoyed it too and I look forward to discussing things in the comments with you okay guys thank you very much for watching take care bye